What's up YouTube? It's Michael aka the YouTuber that you're gonna say looks like Frankie Muniz or any other actor with a large head. Today we're talking about the best Red Wings ever. Standing in the water right now, dry as a bone. Three, 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 fives. Also be sure to check out my carrot link in the bio where you can see my personal wear, loafers that I like, pretty soon boots that I like, watch some considering, act, act, act. Thanks carrot. We'll be talking about the leather, why I was standing in water with them, and I would not with most red wing mock toes. Stitch down construction, Goodyear welt construction, the canvas sides, Puritan stitching or Puritan stitching machine. We have a lot of stuff to talk about and I'll explain why these are the best boots ever. Except my left toe is wet. Here we go. But first, a very brief message from our sponsor, Masterworks. Bonjour! This video is sponsored by Masterworks. I think it's no secret to anybody that watches this channel that I spend a butt ton of money on jackets. I just bought two jackets that cost $1,500. And you may be thinking, well, how can you, what can we do to stop it? There's a few things that you can do. One of them, obviously, is investing. So, a company called Masterworks basically said, hey, the ultra rich are investing in art. Why don't we take that and bring it to the people? Last year alone, fine art sales topped 65 billion dollars and instead of you having to be like Picasso baby Jay-Z and put two three million down on a painting that will one day be worth five million Masterworks breaks it up into individual shares so you can get a piece of a Picasso instead of the whole thing historically the art market has continued to grow even when other markets are slumping Bank of America says that collectibles could outperform in the next decade Masterworks team knows everything about art and they are so good at it they just delivered a 21.5 percent return to their investors not to mention over 500,000 people have already signed up for masterworks and offering sell out sometimes in as little as 15 minutes and there's a waiting list so if you want to skip the waiting list the link is in my description or in the pinned comment and you can check them out today thank you for sponsoring this video masterworks i'll send you guys a free tote or something like that Obviously, with most boot reviews, we would just talk about the leather, but these just don't have leather. They have canvas, too, which is why Stridewise doesn't like them and called them ugly boots. But when talking about the leather, this is pretty standard for Red Wing. This is copper rough and tough from their own tannery. It's a pull-up leather, which means that when you pull up on the leather, it lightens up because you're moving all the oils and waxes. It's very good. It's very pretty. If it scratches, it gets a little bit lighter, but you can easily rub those scratches out. Also, I'm doing two videos at the same time, so I don't normally wear pants this tight, but it's for a different video. So you'll see why in a week after, or maybe a few days after. But like I was saying, these boots are not only made out of copper rough and tough leather, they're also made of canvas, which is where Nick from Stridewise had a little hernia. But what's cool about these boots is that you'll remember from my Huckberry video, Martexan Oxford sailcloth is what that jacket was made out of on that video. Martexan and Fairfield Textiles in New Jersey, which is where I am right now, they make the canvas here. They're kind of like the flagship in heritage wear textiles. Free note cloth uses them, Huckberry uses them, I think Rogue Territory uses them. I bet 93% of any company that does a Made in America product that uses wax canvas uses Martexan and Fairfield Textiles, so that's pretty cool. But what's interesting is typically, uh, hold on, sorry, how unprofessional is this? In the grand scheme of things, especially for stitch down construction, they're not that expensive. I have a theory as to why they're not that expensive. There's a few other spots here where I think they save some money, but it's really not that detrimental. So we'll talk about that. Also something that I like about these boots versus the 875s or the 1907s is that these use a Vibram Honey Wheat Mini Lug Sole. So it's a very, very heavy, dense rubber that I don't feel like will break down very, very fast. Like the crepe soles on the 875s and 1907s. Since construction is such a big part of these boots and such an important distinguishing thing between 875s and 1907s, because this uses stitch down construction versus Goodyear welting, we're gonna break this up into two parts, otherwise I'll just be blobbing and blobbing. This uses stitch down construction, which is different than Goodyear welting, and a lot of, well, really everybody says, for the most part, stitch down construction is superior to a Goodyear welt in terms of durability, strength, and keeping the elements out.
I don't know if it applies to these boots, and I don't think that actually does, and we'll get into that in part two because I have to explain how it works first. So really quick, if you think about the construction of kind of boots in general or leather shoes or anything like that, there is the upper part, there is the lower part, and there has to be a way to fasten the two. There's the Blake stitch, which is just like the horror movie version where you just shove a needle through the boot, it comes out the outside, then you just shove it right back in. There's cementing, which is glue, then there is Goodyear welting, and there is stitch down construction. There's probably more too, and modifications of all of those, but Goodyear welting is you have the upper part of the boot and the lower part of the boot, and then a welt, which is oftentimes a thin kind of outline of the boot in leather, and that comes between the sole and the upper. With stitch down construction, what you're doing is making the upper, so the leather part of the boot that you look at, you're making that essentially the welt. So a welted boot goes like this, it curves down, then you put the welt on, stitch down, the upper goes down, and then it flares out, and that is stitched on to the outsole. But there are two different ways to do this, and these boots do not do the superior or the more durable one. And that's why I think they may come neck and neck, Goodyear welt, in this type of stitch down. So we'll get into that at the end. Okay, leak. The boots lasted for about 30 seconds, fully submerged in the water before they leaked. The left ones leaked right away. I don't know why my left boots always leak right away. And that may not sound that good, and it's not if you're looking to get boots to be submerged for a while, obviously. But for doing things like this, where there's some water, or you're walking through mud or something like that, they'll really never leak, unless, obviously, you go in kind of deep. And the wax canvas won't leak either. So, for all intents and purposes, hiking or whatever these boots are meant to be for, they're perfect. Sizing, I feel like, is pretty straightforward with Red Wings. I went true to size, and they fit fine. I will say, though, there's something about these boots, like, if you look at the profile, they're very, like, slim, because the outsole is really just very, very, very thin, but they are also constructed like that. These tapered down, so in, when I was wearing them when it was warm outside with thin cotton socks, I didn't really have any discomfort or tightness, but now I have wool socks on, and my toes feel kind of squished. I can't really wiggle them around too much, in my experience. <laughs> Okay, so before we get to the final part about stitch down construction and why these boots, I, like I said, I don't think are necessarily better than Goodyear welted boots in this case, just wanted to let you know that yes, these are my favorite boots that I've ever had. They beat my Blundstones, they beat the 1907s, they beat the 875s, and I just, I really like them because obviously the Heritage Work Boots are Heritage Work Boots, and I'm not really doing Heritage Works. I'm going for hikes and walking in the woods. 1907s and 875s are definitely more beefily constructed, so if you need a tough boot, these are probably not the ones to go for, but these, to me, are a dramatically better all-around boot. They're just kind of tough to get, and I think they look way cooler. Okay, anyways, part two of stitch down construction. When comparing these to Goodyear welted boots, I don't really think they have that much of an edge on them. These boots specifically, I do think even when you get to the point of like Nick's boots and White's boots and people like that who make these incredible boots for people that are really working and using them, I think that is the maximum, most effective boot that you can get for the situation that you need it for, but I don't think there's a very big space between the effectiveness of a very well done Goodyear welted boot and a very well done stitch down boot but there is a difference but here I don't think there is or there's not too much so the reason why stitch down is better than Goodyear welted to be impervious to elements like moisture and water and you know whatever muck is everywhere is because you can make a much tighter seal between the upper and the sole I think that's really it. If you read this article by Nix, even at the end, they say this exactly. If we're talking about boots or shoes of equal quality of materials and equal quality control, meaning both are made by a boot company that care deeply about their customers and therefore product, the differences between Goodyear Welton and Stitch Down will be modest, if any. So that's the general explanation, but with these boots specifically, you'll see a lot of Stitch Down boots actually have two stitches going around them. One of them stitches the upper to the midsole, and the other one stitches the upper to the midsole and the outsole, and goes through. And I think that first stitch does a really good job of tightening the seal along the outside and making sure nothing comes in. The second stitch obviously reinforces that and just makes it even better. And the one stitch I think does a good enough job but not a perfect job. So these Red Wings obviously are a much higher tier than Clark's boots but they aren't some infinitely better level than 1907s or 875s in that regard because stitch down isn't infinitely better but also because they're doing a single stitch. So either way, the quality of Red Wings is amazing. They're using the Puritan machine 
machine on the side. So you have the triple stitch and the thread as it's being stitched is dipped into wax, which further locks the seals and keeps the water out. They're fantastic boots. I really like them. These are my all time favorite boots as of right now. I'm going to be making a collection of my favorite boots on Carrot, so definitely check that out below. But other than that, I will see you next week where we talk about the pants that I've been wearing with the title of the video being Why Japanese Denim is the Best in the World. It's an ongoing series. You should definitely check it out. Still not cool if these sunglasses are good yet. <laughs>